The ability to start a crowdfunding campaign, the ability to make a video and show our brilliant idea to the world. And although sometimes that works out pretty great, other times, not so much. And today, following on from the 10 dumb Kickstarter video game consoles video I did last year, I've decided to look at really weird and obviously bad game controllers too. Now for me, nothing beats the original thing. If I aim to get four controllers for a system, I plan to do just that by collecting four of the original designs with the only difference being the colour. Perhaps it's the horrible nostalgic feeling of growing up in a world where everybody had a knockoff second controller and nobody in their right mind would ever pick that thing up over the official thing. However, times have changed. Companies like Hori and 8-Bit Doe have been releasing controllers that actually have started to arguably improve the gaming experience and obviously places like Kickstarter and Indiegogo have brought even more random game controllers to the market and again, some of them are actually pretty good looking. But today, we're not going to be looking at the good. Today, we're going to be looking at the campaigns that went horribly wrong. Shout out to my Kick Scammers Detective Agency over on Discord and link below who have helped compile this list and with so many more suggestions coming forward, I think it's safe to say that if you guys want it, a part two is most definitely on the way. But until that time, all I gotta say is, hey there guys, I'm DJ Slope from Slope's Game Room and this is for stupid Kickstarter gaming controllers. I bet you've never seen such a cute baby. Eight pounds of birth, I'll have you know. My mom still remembers how it went. My delivery was really tough on her pelvic floor. Because of me, she started to have bladder weakness after childbirth. Fortunately, to help her, her physiotherapist recommended PeriFit. PeriFit is a vaginal sensor connected to a smartphone. It helps mom regain control of her perineum. It's like a video game you control with your vagina. Stop! No, I'm not covering this one. No, no, no. Look, guys, if you really want the full gist of this one, they wanted 20,000 euros, they got 91,000 euros by 813 backers. The product did eventually get shipped. However, looking in the comments section, they ended up changing quite a few of the features and the Bluetooth for some reason is covered by something and therefore doesn't work. So yeah, they've asked all the ladies that have used these to return them. And for some reason, they don't want to do that. Uh, let, let's just move on. Let's move on. Ah oh, yes, the grifter. I've wanted to talk about this mess for quite some time. So firstly, what you've got here is a controller that is kind of a mix between a standard Xbox 360 controller, a mouse, a Wiimote, a light gun, a joystick, a selfie stick. This is absolute bonkers. Go, go gadget controller, right? You're probably thinking to yourself, what can't it do? Well, I'll answer that one for you. It can't do any of the things advertised. It simply just doesn't work very well at all. So the history of this one starts with Paul Weatherstone here, who has created a pretty awesome looking video showing off the handheld, complete with atmospheric dubstep music, of course. And after showing you 15,000 ways that this T1000 skeleton hand looking thing will improve your gaming experience, he finally explains that only the left part of the controller is ready for creation, and he needs your help to not only create the right side, but also the center. If it sounds complicated, that's because it is. Even the pledges themselves go on and on, depending on what combination of the controller that you want. Honestly, nobody really knows what's going on here. That is except for Paul Weatherstone himself. When this campaign ended, he managed to pull away with $124,949 of a $65,000 target from a massive 1,544 backers, most of which are deeply confused. Firstly, the original left hand grip that lets you connect stuff like a mouse on the right hand side and use standard controller buttons on the left, as stated, was all ready for completion. And if you want that, you can at a slightly cheaper rate than when it would be eventually released. 
These people got their rewards first, leaving everybody else that ordered the duo left in the dark. And obviously, they didn't end up getting anything, even though he put it up for sale on Amazon and the reviews, well, they're either average or completely awful. In the comments section, if you scroll back far enough, you can see Paul explain that 1,500 Grifter Solos need to be sold before he can ship the 1,230 Grifter Duos to his backers. Well, looking at Amazon, they are all now sold out. But on top of that, the company has also been removed, and due to the sheer amount of people kicking off at him, he has decided to not even log into Kickstarter since July of 2017. The long and short of it is, well, the company has disappeared from Amazon. It's been dissolved. The product and the money are nowhere to be seen, and Paul ain't ever coming back. Leaving a Kickstarter page with nothing but angry backers, invoking their rights under Kickstarter's terms of use. Oh, seriously, guys, when has that ever worked? Let's face it, you've all lost an average of about 60 quid. Oh, except for you. You might have lost a little bit more. Ouch. Who remembers Pokemon Go? Hi, <laughs> kid. Even I, a proper Pokemon gaming virgin, got a little hooked onto this thing back in the day. And from what I can tell, people are still playing easily Nintendo's most popular application to this day. The ability to be able to see your Pokemon in the real world and actually catch them is mind-blowing for Pokemon fans, no doubt, but sadly, it doesn't take too long before the novelty of seeing a floating low-poly Pokemon and flicking them just isn't quite the same experience as catching them with your very own proper Pokeball like they do in the games and the TV shows. Well, that's where the official Pokeball comes into play. We've all seen it. The app everyone's playing. It has taken the world by storm. Hi, I'm Ryan, and I've been blown away by how groundbreaking this app has become. So we wanted to think of a way that we could take this app to the next level and make it even more of a reality by creating a remote. So we got our team of engineers together and we developed a kinetic connective device that pairs with the app. And no longer do you have to flick your finger on your phone, but now you can throw a real ball and catch them the way they were meant to be caught. So obviously I don't need to explain to you guys what exactly happened here, do I? You see, even though a meeting was being had with Nintendo, and they did show interest, but that's as far as it went. Obviously, getting something like this off the ground officially would have taken many more meetings than just the one they supposedly had. Not just with Nintendo, but with the Pokemon company and the application's creators, Ninantec, too. As stated, these meetings only really just started to get going, and as expected, Nintendo asked the campaign owners not to continue with the project during the campaign's life. At this point, the campaign had already shown up on random blogs and news sites all over the internet, as well as getting a little bit of TV coverage too. And even though a private message was sent out to all, vaguely explaining the situation and claiming that they still have the possibility to get it to work with Pokemon Go via open source, they did somehow still manage to just about hit target. The campaign's video and description was changed to remove any branding of Nintendo-related products as instructed, but the goal of $25,000 had already been hit by this point by 685 backers, getting up to a shade under $40,000. As expected, those that actually knew that this had happened and read that email were not at all pleased, and the removal of pledges came in fast after that private message was sent out. As stated, the campaign still did hit its goal, just, and now it's got nothing to do with Pokemon, but instead you get to go bowling and shoot zombies with laser beams. 
Also, you will notice that this new update also comes with a VR headset, which is completely free to everyone that backs to get the original Pokemon Ball. Well, I say free, and <laughs> just like gamer reality, I'm lying. I pledged $35 for the Pokeball that was compatible with Pokemon Go. I am a college student, so I don't have time to keep track of this project. Up until today, I was under the impression that we were still getting what we were promised. I was charged $42 for a ball and a headset. I do not want these. This is not what I signed up for. I would like to receive a refund. Oh, come on, Andrew. It's only $7 extra, and sure, you might not get the games that you paid for or even want, but look at this slick headset. I bet that's worth a few bob, right? Ah, uh, maybe not. So what's the final outcome here then? Nothing. Even though they offered something completely different than what was originally pitched, nothing has happened here whatsoever. And the expected ship date of February 2017 came and went with nobody getting anything. Oh <laughs> well, that was an easy 28k, wasn't it? I suppose it's time to start using that hashtag again, isn't it? <sighs> The future is in motion. A Kickstarter project we love. <laughs> I bet you do. This one did pretty well and it's no surprise the highly produced video has some incredible claims and goes into extreme detail, clocking in at over 9 minutes. Plus, who's this? Uh, we'll get to him in a little bit. So, the idea of this one is actually pretty appealing. Now that VR has become a reality, this device not only tracks your arms and head placement, but also every single finger movement too. Impressive, right? Of course, 1,161 backers got this to $442,227, well over its $250,000 goal. And why so high? Well, 326 backers pledged $75 or less to get t-shirts, shoutouts, and all of the usual low-end tiers that you tend to see. But after this, 51 backers dropped $350 for the body kit and single arm control sensor. 599 backers slapped down $600 a piece to get the full setup, and finally 36 put down a cool $1,200 for two of the previous tier. Ooh, and this isn't including the drastically high postage fees that have also been deducted <laughs> postage fees on a product that hasn't even been shipped. That's not a small amount, I'm sure you'll all agree, which is why the stingy sensation is extra salty when the last update was back on August 30th, 2015, and because of this, the comment section is now a very dark place. Scrolling back through these comments, you notice that the real issue here is the fact that this item, for once, actually kind of already exists. What you are seeing isn't camera trickery, from what I can tell. This does not only exist, but it also works perfectly already. Just not in this state. The problem is, just like so many other previously mentioned campaigns, what you are seeing isn't the final product. Nope. It's not a crappy knockoff from Alibaba, but instead this time, a crazy expensive product from a company called Cinesure that very much already exists. Kind of. Cinesure are a company that have worked for years on movies and games, as well as plenty of other mediums on products that have needed motion capture. Obviously, this is crazy expensive tech, and it was never really meant for the general public. That was until the sales of this sort of stuff started to die down a little, and the company started to market it towards the average consumer at a drastically lower price. Sadly, even though this sounds good on paper, the tech was obviously way too expensive to produce, even at $600, and the team simply can't fulfill the backers at all. Or at least that's one side of the story. The other side is because of this guy, Alex Sarnoff, the CEO. According to people working on the project, when this thing really blew up, Alex did whatever he could to buy in and pay out whoever he could to make it so that this project was his and his alone. 
Obviously, this meant that a lot of money that was raised ended up having to go on things that were not in the original plan, as well as attempting to create internal teams of people to work on creating this in-house rather than working with already experienced manufacturers and suppliers to bring the cost down, which obviously ended up raising the cost in the long run. And one of those people that he did decide to stop working with was this guy. So, who here recognises this chap? Yep, this is Brandon Larch, a guy that was at one point a partner on that incredible Rocket Jump channel. OG YouTubers remember this channel's early days well. And nowadays, however, he has his own channel too. Again, very popular and very tech, especially VR heavy. Sadly for him and his trusting fans for the time, his face was plastered all over this video and campaign. Is he a part of the project's downfall? No, but he did play a big role in helping promote the project, basically becoming a sort of spokesperson for the company, even going as far as posting opinions on Reddit too, and constantly referring to the company as something that he is a part of by saying stuff like, I assure you we're actually going to be able to deliver these, and the whole reason I'm doing this project is to make sure that it gets done right for VR gaming. Obviously, Brandon was one of the casualties of greedy Uncle Sarnoff, and although the product was most definitely a good thing to begin with, the product that it eventually <laughs> became was something completely different. But then again, the awesome product that it started with was also a bit of a fib too. Yeah. Regardless, all we got left is a campaign that hasn't been looked at in well over a year, a domain that's up for grabs, thanks GoDaddy, and a hell of a lot of backers all arguing over who's going to be starting the legal proceedings. Go on then, you start it. No you. No you start it. No you. No you. No you. No you. No you. Hi, my name is Nathan Cohorst. I'm the founder of Genix Innovations and the inventor of a really neat device that a lot of you love. Mobile phone controllers. They tend to get a lot of attention on these crowdfunding sites, and the Gen X card troller is no exception. As you can see by the horrible video scribe video, not only is this not a prototype, it's, well, it's nothing, is it? The idea is that this little card troller would work as a normal wireless controller, but the gimmick is that it's so small and compact that you can actually fit it in your wallet and therefore not have to deal with all of the usual complaints of touch controls, wires and bulky gamepads. At the top of the card, a couple of shoulder buttons will pop out when it's turned on, and the face buttons themselves will have a nice bump feel to them with some extra nice click feedback. Also, it will feature one gigabyte of storage space as standard, but for those that want to pay more, they could get the eight gigabyte of storage version with approved emulators and ROMs already included. Okay, that's a bit dodgy. Maybe it's approved freeware, who knows? But I doubt it because when answering his own questions on the campaign, he claimed that the reason he chose eight gigabytes of storage is because that's the approximate space needed in order to contain every cartridge-based video game produced. Okay, I'm not sure that's quite true, Nathan. Regardless, to get this product to market, all he needed was $2,750, which sadly for him he didn't hit as 62 backers got it to 63% of its goal, totaling $1,734. Speaking of smartphones, isn't a typical smartphone like a really practical and feature-packed computer? That's right, and they have the ability to play just about any game you can imagine. If they've made it for anything, they've made it for a smartphone too. Within the last five years, mobile devices have taken over the entire... Now, just like quite a few on this list, as this is an Indiegogo, the guy simply just ticked the box that allowed for a flexible goal, which means even though he didn't hit target, he still got the money, and he's responsible to deliver a product. Did he? Of course he didn't. The last update was posted four years ago and it goes into detail about the guy's struggles moving from San Diego to South Texas after spending the money earned from this on expensive equipment which will help him get to work. 
The only problem is it's been raining recently and his trailer of thousands of pounds worth of this expensive equipment is on some swampland somewhere and he is just waiting for the clouds to clear up before he can go to work. Yep, that is literally it. The final update. Just waiting for the rain to die down. Any day now, guys. Come on. The rain? Yep, just waiting for that rain to go. Come on, sunshine. Just waiting. Just waiting for that rain to go. Just waiting. Any day now. Any day. Hey there, guys. Thanks for checking out the video. I want to give a big special shout out to all of my Patreons. But first, an extra big shout out goes to this video sponsor, Player One Clothing, who are the official home for the official Slopes Game Room branded hat. Be sure to go over there and pick yourself one up. It is rather awesome, especially in that sexy, lovely box. And also, if you want to go and buy any of the games that you see playing on the screen, plus many, many more, then please do use the PlayAsia affiliate link below. It really does help me continue to review things for you guys on the show. But anyway, back to those Patreons with a big special shout out going to that retro video gamer Gary Pinkett, Mantis, Ryan Burford, Andrew Dalton, Ben Jackson, Jonathan Haywood, Tomek Grabowski, Christopher Turnbull, Phil Lowlands, Mr. Vestek, Josh, Dina, Robertson Dunn, Lefty Intrigued Gaming, Abby Morris, Tim Labonte, Sobi Quang DX, Tim Lunn, Hernanaz, Pixels.Limited, aka Samuel Victor, Red the Beard, Conrad Constantine, Potendo 64, Kareem the Elephant, Casey Garner, Blitz Hedgy, Keylink Reviews, Gemma, Mr. T Shirts, Primetime, Penny Sleeve, Mike H. Fell, Lucas Softail, Yelb Hamburglar, Gregory Arden, Ronnie Method, Sonics Captor, Jeremy Rodriguez, Nick Pollard, Bram Perez, Marcus Kingy Cut, Tyndall, June, The Geeky Dad, Richard Carter, aka Fantastic Dizzy, Todd Paul Float G, and Petty Mew. And as I'm recording this, I've had a new Patreon, which I wasn't able to put onto here. A big shout out goes to Michael Corvin. But anyway, yes, thank you all for so much for checking out the video. As you are watching this, I'm chilling out at the Play Expo in Manchester, where I'm actually premiering a new thing I want to do for my show called Slopes Game Show. And uh, yeah, you'll see more about that in the near future. But anyway, thanks so much, guys. Please do give the video a thumbs up, subscribe, do all of the usual stuff that you do. But for now, this is DJ Slope signing out. And hopefully, I'll see you all next time.